Compared to most countries in the world, the Philippines is more open towards providing women with the same opportunities as men, with women holding top positions in the government, including presidents, senators, congresswomen, and cabinet members. Uh, in discrimination, nor that's the most common. The no? uh, Court Suprema declared in the Bible itself is the universal norm that should, women should be treated with love and respect. But through the ages, men have responded to that injunction with indifference due to the heuristic conceit that women constitute the inferior sex. So, ang tingin palagi ng lipo ng kasi mas mababa yung babae kaysa dun sa lalaki. So, ngayon, ini-equalize natin by providing several laws for the protection of women. However, in the private sector, female employees are still suffering from discrimination and abuse. According to a World Bank report, as of 2010, only 30% of medium-sized enterprises and 20% large enterprises have female managers and that women employees earn only 76% of their male counterparts. Under the Magna Carta of Women also, yung faculty member na babae, uh, public man o private school, nagbuntis outside of marriage, dati tinatanggal sa trabaho, ngayon hindi na pwedeng tanggalin yan because that would be discrimination against women. Many experts have voiced out that though there have been improvements throughout the years, there is still room for improvement, especially in the workforce. In situations like these, what can female employees do to uphold their basic and special rights and benefits in the workplace? What are the laws that state these rights, benefits, and privileges? What government agencies oversee and enforce these rights and privileges? Good evening. You're watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. I'm Attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Tonight, as a continuation of our celebration of Women's Month, we will discuss your legal rights on the topic of women's rights in the workplace. Our guests for tonight are Ms. Evelyn Lita Manangan, Chief Labor and Employment Officer of Women Workers Development Division of the Bureau of Workers with Special Concerns of the Department of Labor and Employment, and Ms. Beth Angshoko, National Chairperson of Democratic Women's Society of the Philippines. Yeah. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Beth. Good evening. And, and is it Evelyn? Evelyn. Uh, so we call you Evelyn. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you for, for joining us tonight. And uh, again, uh, in celebration of Women's Month, we, we focus on this. And uh, I think we start off by, by really maybe focusing on uh, specific laws, now, particularly in maybe perhaps Evelyn for the yeah. Department of uh, Labor or, or Labor yeah. Laws. Can you we, maybe highlight? I guess yeah? this emphasizes mm -hmm. how important women's rights are in terms mm -hmm. of being in the workplace because yeah. our Department of Labor has a specific division just for women's concerns. Yes. So, Ms. so maybe, Evelyn, uh, Ms. Evelyn, can you highlight maybe some of the pertinent laws that are, I guess, uh, very key laws no, that will protect women yeah. in the workplace? One of the important breakthroughs is the repeal of Article 130 and 131 of the Labor, labor Code, which used to be the women are not allowed to work at night, at, night. at certain mm. periods at night, from 10 in the evening to 6 a.m. of the following day. Mm. But with the developments now, it has been repealed and we have a new law, the protection of night workers. So the protection does not only extend to women, mm -hmm. but also to males. So there mm. are certain requirements and benefits that should be accorded to men and women alike. Mm -hmm. So Ms. Evelyn, just to, I guess, summarize the importance of this law. Now, all workers, uh, whatever sector, they're, if they're women workers, they're allowed to work late at night, meaning yung mga night shift. Yes. Pwede yes. Na. And this is very important, lalo na sa BPO industry, mm -hmm. where sometimes the work hours are mm -hmm. baliktad. They follow other countries, mm -hmm. so they start work at 11 p.m., 12 a.m. So now, if your shift is that late and you're a female worker, or this even applies to male workers, are you entitled to the night differential pay? Yes, the night shift differential pay is required. And that, of course, there are certain provisions, especially to women workers. There's still the protection given to them, especially to pregnant women. Mm. What types of protections, Ms. Evelyn? Like, for example, they can be relieved from doing this night duty mm -hmm. if there is a available time or schedule for them, and that they should be protected against discrimination. That is, they should not be dismissed mm -hmm. just because of this reason. So if they refuse, let's say, let's just say uh, a woman is pregnant and she refuses to work at night, 
but most of the operations of let's say that BPO is at night. Mm -hmm. Can she can she claim that? Uh, I guess can she invoke this this law and say that no, you can't dismiss me, even if the operations of the BPO is mainly at night. Well, if there is no alternative shift, then yes. they, they could consider um, giving her the benefits of workers who are not qualified to work at night. Mm. So that's the, that one of the rules. Even if they're not working, what types of benefits can they get? Is mm. there like a compensation that they can expect? You mean if they're not allowed to work because they're, they're not fit to yes, work? Yes, yeah. and then there's no alternate shift that is earlier than the evening. Uh, what I recall was that they should be given these benefits like other workers who are, uh, say for example, because of reasons of health, they could no longer um, report to work. Work at night. Yes. So they have to be yeah. given, I guess if they have to, they'll, they'll be given, I guess, uh, I guess, separation pay, the appropriate separation pay, right? Yes. yes. But can, can the employer use that? Meaning, can the employer use that as a, as a uh, valid reason? Oh, since you're not working at night and most of our operation is at night, Therefore, we'll have to let you go. Can, can a, an employer justifiably invoke that? Well, they can use that as a reason, but we yeah. also have other remedies in Dole. Mm -hmm. we, we have now this SENA, single entry approach. Whatever complaints you have, you can always rest, raise it mm -hmm. to the concerned regional office and they can have conciliation proceedings. All right. Now, can you, uh, Beth, can you talk about this? There's this Magna Carta for Women. Yes. Can you yeah. give us a kind of a brief summary of what it's all about and I guess the teeth behind yeah. this Magna Carta? Actually, the Magna Carta for Women is one of the most revolutionary laws that we have at this point. It, it uh, provides for all sorts of rights of women. Uh, the beauty about Magna Carta of Women when it comes to workers is that beyond those who are formally employed, it also affords uh, provisions. It, it has provisions, for instance, uh, women workers, women, women rural workers, mm -hmm. uh, small farmers, mm -hmm. small fisher folks. Because when we speak about workers, we have to realize that uh, there are many types of workers. Mm -hmm. and. At this point, the majority of women workers are actually not in the formal setup, meaning uh, they are out there in the streets, they are out there in their homes working, mm -hmm. and these sites become their uh, work, work sites, work sites. Work, their workplaces. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the, the, uh, the beauty of Magna Carta of Women is that it provides the framework so mm -hmm. that all these uh, workers who are basically uncovered by the uh, other labor uh, labor laws mm -hmm. will have something to stand on mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons why we in our group are actually pushing for uh, it's not just a law it's still a bill mm -hmm. the Magna Carta of workers in informal economy which mm -hmm. means that okay. These other types of workers, and I tell you, they are the majority of workers now in the country. Right. They number more than 25 million. Wow. And, and, and women? You're talking about just women? Not just women. Oh, just, not oh, just women. The entire population oh, okay. of workers in the informal economy oh. numbers to more than 25 million. But then, the majority of women who are active in the labor force are in the informal economy. So it's, it's one of the things that should mm -hmm. complement uh, the laws, that, uh, the present laws that we have. And it's nice that there is the Magna Carta of Women because mm -hmm. there is a framework, a framework now. already. Mm -hmm. yes. And Ms. Beth, how long do you think will it take in order for this Magna Carta to become a law? Unfortunately, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's the fourth Congress mm -hmm. that the bill has been filed. Mm -hmm. Uh, but fortunately for this Congress, it looks like the House of Representatives is moving About quite fast okay. mm -hmm. because tomorrow there's going to be a technical working group in the committee of uh, Congressman Agrales mm -hmm. that will put together uh, the, 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 uh, what we hope would be the committee report, the alternative mm -hmm. bill. Mm -hmm. In the Senate, uh, we're still hoping that the committee of Senator Binay would actually, uh, because we've been promised that there's going to be the committee meeting. Okay. So we're still and waiting. you think that the current laws are not enough to address the needs of women at the moment, at that the this moment, Magna Carta is really important? At the moment, uh, there are very specific laws for very specific mm -hmm. issues. And, right. and we're actually happy working with DOLE uh, in relation with uh, those who are uh, formally employed because mm -hmm. 
the protections are there. Protections are there. The protections are there. Except that ako, I will not consider these laws as special laws for women because mm -hmm. they are there to equalize things. They are there in recognition of, of the fact that women fact are that a women, little disadvantaged. Yeah, and not only that. Uh, we have specific needs, not mm -mm. special needs. For instance, we have maternity benefits because we do get pregnant yes. and, and men don't. So yeah. I won't consider that a special. Yeah. It's a specific law for women. Mm. And uh, going back to the Magna Carta of Workers in Informal Economy, it's, it's, uh, we're hoping that uh, this, will, this will go through because this will, uh, what you call this, recognize the rights of and provide for the welfare of mm -hmm. those workers who are not presently covered by the labor code. Okay. okay. Uh, I have a question that relates to labor rights, actually, mm -hmm. that are current. Mm -hmm. And this is with respect to women who are parents and still working, yeah. especially single mothers. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have what types of rights or benefits do single mothers or even those who are married, but of course actively raising kids, but also working, what yeah. type of rights do they have in the workplace? Uh -huh. There's this Solo Parents yes. uh, Welfare Act yes. okay. with DSWD as the lead agency, but there's yeah. a portion there which talks about parental leave of yes. seven days mm -mm. Mm -hmm. for yes. the parent, either male or female in that mm -mm. case, yes. to attend to situations when her presence or his presence is needed, like maybe the kid is to have mm -hmm. a yeah. school uh, yeah. study tour mm -hmm. or something like that. What about maternity leave? Currently, how many weeks for mm -hmm. natural birth and for cesarean? Uh, for normal delivery, it's 60 days. Yeah. And for cesarean... 60 days with pay? Yes, yes. 78 days for, for cesarean. cesarean. All right. Okay, and mm -hmm. we have questions from Twitter and one of them was actually our very own Mai Rodriguez asking. <laughs> Who just gave our, birth. Yes, exactly. She just gave birth. Yeah. She's, with, she's one of our colleagues here in Solar. She was asking on Twitter, uh, are the rights for children to have daycare in the office, is that provided in the law? Uh, it's there in the labor code, but it would depend on the rules and regulations as may be set by the dual secretary. Which hasn't been... Uh Hasn't been issued. The, 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 um, the there IIR? were attempts to issue, yes. ah, okay. but there are cases where, or in most cases, when there were studies done before, uh, very few women avail of this because probably because of the distance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, the difficulty the, of bringing yeah. your baby to, 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 the to work, them, no? yeah. and that's the reason why years ago the advocacy actually that we were doing is that. Uh, daycare centers or child care facilities should be available not just in workplaces but uh, you know communities uh, should also provide for you mean near the house yes. no? or even yes. near drop off points if it's yeah. going to the LRT San yes. yeah. no? yes. no. so now if you, if there, the office does not have a daycare you can't really complain about that as not, being not, violative of the law not really not because the implementing not, uh, rules is not right. has not been issued as yet but uh, according to the ECCD law, there are certain tax incentives that can be given to the employer should they come up with ECCD facilities. Ah, okay. yeah. So that's, that includes that's, uh, the that's, daycare. That would be helpful daycare. for the employer. And I remember right. Dole used to have uh, used to recognize uh, uh, workplaces that actually really give a uh, premium to the welfare of, of their women workers. All right. yes. Now we have, uh, we have a couple of questions, uh, some questions from our viewers. Let's start answering them with the help of our, our guests, of course. Lucy sent this question, I was forced to resign by my boss after learning that I was pregnant with my first child. They didn't give me any reason for my dismissal. They just gave me a form to sign. I was threatened to sign the form or I will not get my wage. What case can I file for this? Uh, uh, this is not allowed. allowed. Oh, it sounds it's like allowed. discrimination. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like a yeah. straight out uh, discrimination case, no? Yes, yeah. we have this in the labor code. Uh, yeah. That's a prohibited act. That is uh, dismissal on account yeah. of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what but can, of course, uh, most often they don't uh, they don't tell you that it's really about mm, the pregnancy. They usually find uh, yeah. another yeah. reason. Yeah. 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 So, so in this case, what would be her first step? Should she go to the Department of Labor and? And w what uh, department should she go to? Yeah, they can go to the nearest uh, field office of the yes. DOLE. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, we have these conciliation procedures. Okay. Uh, yes. The employer may be informed that this is her right and that something should be done about it. Mm -hmm. So after a 30-day 
period of conciliation mm -hmm. if things don't turn out right, if there's no acceptable um, di, tawag nito, uh, resolution, agreement, yeah, resolution yeah, between yeah, the two, then it can yeah. uh, be filed as a regular case at the NLRC for illegal dismissal. And so it Magna, becomes an illegal Magna dismissal Magna case. actually yeah. also provides for uh, other ways to do things because the Magna Carta of Women assigns the uh, Commission on Human Rights as the gender on yes, board. Yes. Mm -hmm. And therefore, one of the functions of the Commission on Human Rights is actually to help women who think mm -hmm. that they have you know, been discriminated against mm -hmm. to file cases. So that's mm -hmm. another way of, mm -hmm. of uh, doing things yeah. maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can work together. Yes. CHR yeah. can go to Dole. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this, of filing. course, the remedy under the Magna Carta is not available until it becomes a law. It, no, uh, the Magna Carta of Women is a law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it only for the informal workers no, that it's still no. a bill. No, the, uh, yeah, yes, you're correct. correct. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So you're the correct. Magna Carta yes. is already a law. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I thought yeah. you meant yung mga hindi pa kasama sa workplace. You were also talking uh, no. about that as a remedy. Uh, this particular yeah. case. Yes, just to uh -huh. clarify. <laughs> yes. um, Ma'am Beth is talking about that specific Magna Carta yeah. for yeah. women yeah. that is already a law uh -huh. in uh -huh. effect. Yes. Yes. And that has teeth, right? That has yes. penalties, mm -hmm. that has yes, uh, certain has. provisions that uh, mm -hmm. mandate employers to, to do specific yes. acts. Okay, we have another question from Kelly, and she's asking, I need advice regarding sexual harassment at work. I am a secretary and my boss often makes green jokes. At first, I try to ignore these, but sometimes his jokes become offensive, especially when he has guests or colleagues at the office. Can I file for a sexual harassment case against him? Do I need to, prove proof, to provide proof of this? Yeah. Yes. Uh Beth or, or? Yeah, okay. Yeah. The, the, the law on sexual harassment has been passed in 1994. Mm -hmm. So it was a long time ago. And, mm -hmm. and uh, be as it may, it provides for uh, protection of the women who, uh, for instance, in this case, the beauty of the law is that it largely depends on, on the perception of the, of the recipient of the harassment. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and I think that uh, if the case is like this, I think it can, it can, uh, can she can open. certainly, can file, certainly uh, file. But yes, you've got, uh, there are processes involved, of course. And maybe, uh, Ms. Evelyn, can, can you provide a uh, process, a specific process, process in this case, she, she was feeling that she was being sexually harassed with, mm -hmm. with green jokes. Mm -hmm. um, so, what specific process does she go to? Again, do they go to the field but office? In, but internally, uh, there should be a process yes. in the office. In the yes. Office. They, the, they're required to have yeah. that, right? Yeah. Yeah, the law requires that they policy. have a policy against yes. sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. uh, and this will be based on what the law says. Yes. So, the, the trouble is when we talk about green jokes, if we are to strictly construe what the law says, there should be this um, request for se sexual favors. Oh, so whether or not okay. this was accepted off. by the yeah. victim, then that's it. Still also, sexual harassment. For, if for this to, to uh, move ahead, this case would move ahead, there has to be a request for a sexual favor. So a green jokes in itself will not prosper? Uh, Let's the say, remedy uh, okay. is they should perhaps include this in their company policy or the rules, mm, okay. so that will be an inter, uh, administrative case oh, yeah. against the... More internally employee. rather than... Yes, with but the not in, in, in court yeah. because they still have other remedies like... I see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Civil sexual or criminal harassment case. cases is tough. Oh. Yeah, yeah is, because is, I, think I, think I, think I think a lot of people mm -hmm. have this misconception. It's like the sexual harassment laws mm -hmm. in other countries yeah. where something like this can mm -hmm. amount to sexual harassment. But right. for us, you have to have moral ascendancy and then, mm -hmm. again, it has to be in exchange for uh, a, a promotion favor, yeah. or you get discriminated uh, if you do not, uh, for instance, give a sexual favor. So it's very specific. Yeah. And the law actually is quite limited in terms of scope. Mm -mm. Well, it only mm -hmm. deals with uh, women in workplaces yeah. or work-related uh, incidents mm -hmm. and in training and mm -hmm. education. But I have an advice for mm -hmm. this uh, person asking a question, she can also file for unjust vexation under yeah. the yes. revised penal. Yes. It's a, yeah. it's a, it, it's a yeah. criminal case and unjust vexation, paglaging, the green yeah. jokes, it can amount yeah, it to really that. It could really if it really offend mm -hmm. you, yeah. All right, uh, Fran is asking, I've been noticing some discrepancies in the office in the last two years. I had one office mate who got engaged and another who got pregnant and my boss treated them differently compared to those who are single. He gave them more work 
and has been more critical towards their mistakes, if any. Now, can this be a form of harassment? <laughs> it's a so little, uh, so, so subjective, no? It's so it's a difficult. Little di difficult yeah. Yeah, kasi, How can you yeah. even prove that it yeah. was connected, right? Because yeah. some bosses can just say, yeah. no, there was just There's a lot just, of work and I was just giving them more work. Yeah, so it's hard yeah. to even prove the connection yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So, because some projects are, some, if I, for example, myself, I have some employees. If I, if I assign a project, Sometimes that project entails more work than another yeah. project that another yeah. person is working on. So. Yeah, and usually there's a reason why you assign people to certain jobs. It yes. also has to do with the capacity and, and yeah. things like that. So, mm -hmm. on the face of it, it's very hard to comment. Yeah, because it's yeah. possible that the pregnant woman was probably more capable. But assuming they were, they were able to prove in this case that the boss was really giving more work to those who are engaged or mm. got married because... Of course, as a form of discrimination. Uh -uh. What remedies do they have here? Remedies? Mm -hmm. Well, they can, if there's no illegal dismissal or they're not told yeah. that they're dismissed, that's yeah. kind of tough to uh, It to, would tough, yeah. be tough to, be, mm -hmm. to, to yeah. prosper, no? Yeah. Uh -oh. But any, what ground can they file if they have like, some mm -hmm. proof talaga na that there is really discrimination in the distribution yeah. of work and that they're being work. given mm. more work and Ooh. basically a more unfriendly environment in the workplace because of yeah. that. Is there any type of remedy that they can file a case against this, um, this employer? The Magna Carta of Women, I think, if I remember correctly, has this provision saying that uh, women workers, particularly if they are pregnant, mm -hmm. cannot uh, be made to work uh, in more difficult, uh, difficult yes. uh, types of work. Mm -hmm. Cannot be made to carry heavy but this things. Is, the but problem with so this is just giving additional workload and mm -hmm. it has nothing to exactly. do with them being pregnant. They were mm -hmm. just engaged and then got married. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sometimes for me, uh, for, for me, for me, uh, when I give work to uh, to one of my employees, it's actually a reward. Not because, not not for anything, but it's just a recognition that recognition. I can rely on her more. Yes. Uh -oh. If if a person has more work in my office. Uh, that means I, in fact, yung mga what, medyo lang work, sila yung nag-question na parang, oh, I'm being discriminated on because I'm not being given any work, yeah. di ba? Yeah. So I guess it depends. I would, I would, I would hazard a guess. It's pro it probably depends on the circumstances, the on the facts of the case, right? Making the connection is the most difficult thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess yeah. one thing we have to clarify in this case, it's not harassment. I mean, yeah. wala ka tayong ganung mm -hmm. batas yeah. na it's going no, to be more work is harassment. type of yeah. harassment. And, um, yeah, no, I, I but so. I guess discrimination in the workplace can be a ground. Mm -hmm. Kasi karamihan na sinasabi sa discrimination, sa so 6725 is on uh, wage. Mm -hmm. So, on account of sex, yes. Yes. Right. or on account also of promotion, training, training, opportunities, mm -hmm. scholarships, and training. So, right. uh, one area na masisilip na pwedeng gamitin. Uh, oh, okay. Doon ang discrimination, training, mm -mm. Uh, wages, 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 promotion, promotion. Right. Mm -mm. Okay. scholarships. Okay, mm -hmm. so I guess the volume of work is not discrimination <laughs> per se. <laughs> more and to... more work. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a lot of interesting topics, especially mm -hmm. since we're talking about work and women in mm. particular in the workplace yeah but i guess this is we're also starting to recognize gaps yes, because of this conversation right. and the questions from our viewers yeah. but for now we'll have to take a short break legal help desk will return after these messages several laws that cover the basic and special rights and needs of women employees, and these laws must be met by companies. Unfortunately, many have neglected to cover the basic rights, benefits, and privileges of their employees, especially their female employees, such as the case of Anna. I work in a telecommunication company for almost two years. That is. May 2012, so may naging problems ako dito sa company namin. So at first, for mga first few years, hindi namin nakikita yung mga ano namin yung problem eh. Pero napapansin na namin na parang nagiging madalas na 
yun din na kami naggumawa na ng week ay sa paano para. Pag una ka doon, six months, six months. So after six months, pag itutuloy ka pa rin nila, three months, three months na. Pero ngayon, recently, naging one month, one month na lang yung pag-extend nila. And then, di na namin alam kung may-extend po kami for another month. Kung baga, assurance namin, one month kami na doon sa company. And also, yun sa 13 month, like, ano ba, sa rin kami nag-request, kung pwede din, kung may payslip kami, kasi nga parang doubtful kami doon sa nakukuha namin. Pero hindi sila nagpo-provide. Malit na bagay lang yan, pero kasi di ba karapatan natin yan. Like, sige natin, 68 pesos lang yan. Karapatan mo yan, pinasok mo yan for one, for one hour, di ba? So, yun, dapat talaga binibigay nung company ko na dapat na natatanggap ng mga employee nila. Pero dito sa amin kasi wala kami laban. Like, kung magkakomplain kami, three times na nangyari, na hindi na isasama, four times, five times, wala lang, ganun lang. Yung company namin, also, usapan ng mga regular by this quarter na lang, dinaalas na sila. Pero mga, nakakuha sila ng benefits doon. So, pero kami mga, ano, sa, as project base, wala lang. Kung hanggang March ka, nga, March ka lang. Wala ka mga kuwang benefit from us. Parang ganun. Kasi sa company, sana ma maiayos sila. Kung may mag-takeover man na bagong company, maayos nila. Hindi na nila madala kung ano yung naging problem ng company before. Para, ano na, kasi diba, dapat alagaan din nila yung mga employees nila. You are still watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. And with us are Ms. Evelyn Dita Manangan of the Bureau of Workers with Special Concerns of the Department of Labor and Employment, and Ms. Beth Angsioko, National Chairperson of Democratic Women's Society of the Philippines. Yeah, so we had we heard uh, the case study, uh, si Anna, mm -hmm. uh, and it seemed uh, from her narrative, you know, parang ini extend extend lang yung mm -hmm. employment niya. So on basically, a, on a month to month yeah, basis, no, yeah. Yeah, umpisa yeah. six months, months and then yeah. nagiging three months. Now month to month na. So it's uh -huh. basically. Not even a contractual arrangement, but it sounds like they're kind of like Extending. made probationary employees that never become regular employees. So maybe. Pero di ba the law actually says that you, if you have worked uh, for mm -hmm. six months, yeah. then you automatically become regular. A regular employee. employee. Is that confirmed? So Miss Evelyn, I think Evelyn? you can clarify Is this. It six months now. Is oh. in the first place, Tam. Yeah. So hmm. after you work for six months, do you become a regular employee? Uh, used to be, but we have this. Uh, fixed term employment. Ah, yes. That's yep, they have these type. other forms of um, contracts. Yeah. Mm. So perhaps if they feel so aggrieved about the situation, they can always uh, report the case or get information from our nearest mm. regional office. So that, to, case, so the, that the, they can study uh, if it's really yes, a it's legal you know. yeah. fixed term employment. or Because sometimes, oh. pag fixed term, it means... Mm -mm contractual kasi yung nature yes. ng trabaho that yes. yeah. for instance if i'm going to ask you rod to write a program for yes. an application if yeah. i'm a software company then i say you have a year to develop this app mm. application that's fine that's fine that's yeah, contractual that's yeah. but in this case if there for instance a call center or Part a department day -day. store yeah. why will you be given just six months and then you get renewed for another month and then yeah. another month mm -hmm. when the work is continuing right mm -hmm. so they I guess have to report this to where can they report this type of arrangement? It's also to the nearest regional office or field office of the Dole. Uh -huh. so, so they can study NCR, if it's legal yeah. or not. And CR Manila we have a field office there. If it's yeah. in Makati, mm -hmm. there's another There's one. a field office there and they're normally normally my officer of the day who will yes, guide, have, them, who uh, guide them. Yes, guide them. Officers who yeah. will attend yeah. to they queries and even complaints. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a question in relation to this, Miss Evelyn. Anna was mentioning that they don't feel confident about reporting this or complaining because they feel na one nothing's going to happen it's not going to be addressed and second i guess they're afraid now if you report you might get fired and just replace so is there a way to report to the regional office so they can just study if this arrangement is legal without being disclosed without their identities being revealed at first i think anonymous can be done anonymous complaint or they can go directly and we mm. can always say mm -hmm. they can always say that it should not be reported just yeah. for information yeah but for their yeah. information that they have yes. they seem to have at least a uh, right a right to to file a case yeah, uh, to para to you're granting them uh, giving them advice on yeah, whether they have they have a basis yeah. on their on their complaint okay now um, there was a question uh, uh, miss beth you know, regarding the magna carta law that you, uh, for women <coughs> that you were discussing earlier um, i think there there, there was a, a question actually in our uh, studio um, whether 
when when it comes to the informal se uh, uh, inform informal sector, uh -huh. you were mentioning that 25 million people are still, yes. uh, no, just uh, are still part of that. Uh, can you just clarify that uh, whether they're already covered or not? They're not. They're not yet covered as we speak, right? They're they're still no, a bill. No, there is no law that hmm. actually sets labor standards for you know, for workers in informal uh, sure. sector. Sure. Now, uh, just to just to explain a bit about who these workers are, mm -hmm, yeah. they are they are actually the people we see on the streets. You know, mm -hmm. the vendors, yeah, the, vendors. the newspaper uh, uh, vendors, those who run sari sari stores. What about those small. who sell online? Uh, there is no for as long as there is no formal employee employer relationship. Mm -hmm. And that, How about kasambahay? The kasambahay. The kasambahay. There is a kasambahay law, okay, kasi yeah. the, the bill only covers the on-call, on-call babysitters, on-call kasambahay, mm. on-call mm. drivers, things like that. Yung mga freelance. Uh, freelance. Yeah, yung mga freelance. Even for instance, in in the movie industry or mm. in media, yeah, those who PA, are mga PA, oh, PA on-call, what you call these makeup artists, beat mm. players, they are considered to be uh, workers Perfect. in the informal, informal economy. Ah, so it's it's a huge huge, huge group of workers. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, uh, particularly those in the communities, they don't have any protection. For instance, they're not, basically, basically they don't have social security. Uh, it's ironic because the, the mandate of the social security system is to co Cover universal group. coverage. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the mandate. But when, if you are self-employed, for instance, and you want to be a member of the social security system, the, the irony is that you have to pay double uh, what a normal employed uh, person actually pays because mm. you don't have an employer that will carry the employer's share. Mm. So you shoulder that. What if you're magtititinda ng taho? What if you're uh, a, a simple lavandera? But mm. you cannot do that. So that bill that we're pushing for will provide for customized benefits because uh, these workers are willing to pay. Except mm. that, th let's not punish them naman with, with the, paying more pa than those who are formally employed. Because uh, they also make less. Yeah, because Di they na sila less. secure. Exactly. Di na sila secure and then we'll make them pay pa higher. Di ba? Exactly. Oh. The, yeah. the bill also provides for representation, for instance, because as we speak now, when we speak of workers, usually we refer to those in the formal setup. Mm -hmm. But we do not generally consider those who are outside of the formal setup. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they don't have a voice. Yeah. For instance, in, in SSS, there is no seat for, for uh, uh, somebody from the informal economy and in other government offices. Mm -hmm. the, the, the thing is, uh, me, I recognize that one of the problems is data. And, and therefore, the because bill, not yeah, the bill uh, provides for a simple way of accreditation and registration for these workers. So mm -hmm. we really know who these workers are and how they can contribute to, mm -hmm. uh, to society because they are there, they are willing to pay, they are willing to contribute. But at the same time, government uh, should also be able to provide for uh, their rights. Mm -hmm. Now, Ms. Evelyn, I have a question about Again, you mga <coughs> nag engage or getting married in, while being part of the workforce. Earlier, we talked about if you're just being harassed in a sense or being unfairly treated just because you just got engaged or, or you got married. Now, in terms of people refusing to hire you because you just are newly engaged or uh, married, and I think normally this is linked to the potential of the women having kids soon. Yes. Is that a form of discrimination as well? If, for instance, during the hiring process, during the interview process, you have an employer who refuses to hire you because they find out that you're just engaged or you just got married. Uh, this is part of the proposed bill, yes. the mm. past Congress, yes. because at the moment, um, hiring, I mean, there, there's no employer-employee relationship yet as yeah. Yeah. when you're still, uh, mm. what you call this, uh, An applicant. applicant. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So ah, there, we have the management prerogative concept, so right. it's so really difficult to say that there was uh, she has a remedy and yes. she's been discriminated, yeah. but we do, we do recognize that women are discriminated mm -hmm. in terms of Actually, to be honest, I've experienced that myself. Um, in, they didn't say that they weren't going to hire me, but I've come across some uh, law firms that are very vocal about saying that, oh, for our litigation department, we prefer to hire males. We're looking for more male applicants because mm -hmm. they're 
we want males if they're yeah. going to court we feel yes. more comfortable yes. that they're yes. males and then usually the questions pa are about oh so you're single are you gonna uh, do you have a boyfriend yeah. do you plan yeah. to get married yeah. soon yeah. Yeah. and do you have kids and mm-hmm. i overheard one partner saying that they prefer married with kids already or sobrang bata pa na matagal wala pang plans na magpakasal yeah. soon because they're yeah. worried that they're gonna be yeah, gonna get trained yeah. and then yeah. in the middle of important cases or transactions they suddenly go on maternity leave yeah. and exactly. then of course yeah. they can't keep up with their yeah. male counterparts or the male yeah. lawyers in the firm yeah. of course there's discrimination. discrimination there is yeah. yes yeah. but, but then again if they're applying pa lang, it appears that exactly. you can't do anything about it yeah because there is no uh, relationship uh, at all you're, you're not an employee and therefore yeah, yeah, you're no. not covered by the, they can by always the protections deny, no? of the law they can always yeah. deny that they can always deny well i, th- I yeah. didn't hire her because yeah. of some other reason yeah. or even That's not something. deny according to miss evelyn you of course i think this management prerogative yes yeah. doctrine yes. where so unfortunately but, the but is, yeah it's, it, the reason why it's so hard is it's because in in the country i think there is uh no or virtually uh very little recognition uh, that women's reproductive roles, you know, getting pregnant, uh, giving birth, mm. are actually social functions. Mm. They are actually, uh, you know, because if we yeah. all don't get pregnant and don't yeah. give birth, what happens? well, what happens to the Filipino uh, yeah. the nation, diba? Right? But what I'm saying is that the same way that we were uh, advocating before for better maternity benefits, the premise is because uh, women's uh, you know, uh, getting pregnant and, and giving birth should be looked at by society as a social responsibility also. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you, in, other, in other words, as an employer, you should factor that in already. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Now, but it's uh, not like I have that. Yeah. a question about mm. leave. Since we're talking mm. about giving birth and, of course, mothers being the care carers or caregivers in the family. Yes. Uh, I'm sure Rod, you know this, you were probably taken care of more by your mom no, than your dad. Um, no? Just to be politically correct, it was balance. Ah, wow. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, you're right. No, absolutely. Because mm. my, my, my father was working, yeah. Yes, yeah. earlier we were talking about maternity, maternity mm-hmm. leave. Yeah. So mm-hmm. for natural mm-hmm. or normal births, it's six, uh, 60 days with pay. And for mm-hmm. cesarean, it's 78 days. Yeah. What other leaves are available? Someone asked me on Twitter earlier, is there a dysmenorrhea leave? Because mm-hmm. it's also specific yeah. to women, yeah, but it happens right. every month for some people. Yeah, for, or, yeah. So or, is there a dysmenorrhea leave? You can take a sick leave. Yeah, oh, take, take a sick leave. A sick okay. leave. So, no, there, but there, I know yeah. that there are unions who are yeah. actually able well, to 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 uh, to negotiate mm-hmm. for for. Well, me as an employer, I, I I kind of take that into consideration. If that, let's say. And of course, but of course, uh, you still deduct yeah, you, that from their sick leave. Yes, I mean, so uh, para yeah. kawawa no, It's sure, not no. that their own choosing sure. na. Because more, exactly. more often than not, more often than not, they don't exactly. get sick the month for 15 days in oh, a year. Yeah. So yeah. we just kind of remove that. But I, I have uh, another question regarding sickness, uh, sicknesses and illnesses. I think there there is a law. Uh, I believe it might be the Magna Carta law where uh, regarding uh, gy- gynecological, gyne- uh, gynecological yeah. diseases yes. and surgeries. Can you yeah. expound on that a little mm-hmm. a, a little bit more? The the provision in in the Magna Carta of women is that if you're a woman and and you had for instance an operation, mm-hmm. uh, gynecological uh, problem, then you're entitled to two more weeks of mm-hmm. leave. Okay. Uh, and and this. Mm-hmm. Uh, two months, sorry, I'm sorry, Ed. Two months. Uh, two okay. months of leave on yeah. top of what you uh, what you already have, uh, and these, these are, are paid for leads? yes, paid fully paid. Fully paid. The, okay. it's the it's yeah, mm. fully paid by the employer. It's very clear in the Magna Carta. Yeah. Okay. It's spelled out, mm. and and then uh, that uh, the only condition is that the woman should have been able to work for at least six months in the last mm. twelve uh, in the last year. Okay. In the last twelve uh, right. months, so that is another kind of uh, another leave, leave, special leave. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. Yes. Can you give an example of these gynecological conditions that would entitle you to this additional two months leave? For instance, if you have uh, an, some o- women have ovarian, ovarian cysts, you know, cyst, and sorry. you had to remove it. Mm-hmm. I guess that's one of those. Uh, mm. Was there anything regarding, uh, I guess, a surgery? You're talking about yeah. surgery of the reproductive surgery. organs mm-hmm. of, oh. a, of a woman. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And doesn't apply to men, of, of course. No? 
Well, unless you have an ovary. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, just, right. just, just check it. <laughs> Trying to be creative. Okay. Like, and it's like a mad to get a gynecologist. We can, we can also have surgery yeah. in our reproductive organs. That's my... Oh, yeah, that's but true. it's the mad oh. heart of women yeah. we're right. talking. Okay. It's only for oh. women. Excuse for women. But, me. So, I mean, okay. uh, ordinary sick leave, I mean. Ordinary sick leave. What if okay. uh, parental, yeah. parental leave you mentioned earlier? Mm -hmm. Now, if the mother, because both parents are working, if the mother is the one that must hands on uh, about taking care of the children and one of the children gets sick, what type of leave can they take? Na hindi vacation leave, hindi sick leave, what can they get? Parang ang, ang alam ko lang, uh, at, at this point, what I know is the provision of the single uh, solo parents. Solo parents uh, but if you're married, you cannot. Yeah. You can get any yeah. okay. CBA. Unless CBA. Unless CBA, yeah. Uh, uh, collective, collective bargaining, bargaining agreement. agreement. All right. Okay. Okay, we have a, a few more questions no? uh, before we wrap up our, from our viewers. Lina asked, I underwent a dilation and curtage, is that correct? Curtage yeah. procedure last February and filed for a leave at work. My initial leave of two weeks was approved, but I had to get a two week extension because I was still anemic. But our company doctor didn't approve of the extended leave as part of my Magna Carta claim. Can you please clarify this? Is this valid? The company only paid me for 60 hours or 80 hours of work as part of my benefits. Is that valid? The, the, the employer should have paid for the full for the full is amount, right? I don't know if the NC is our guidelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, what should follow? What what what? What the employer should follow is what the doctor would certify. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you are entitled to two months maximum for a year. Mm -hmm. So if the doctor says two weeks lang, two weeks lang talaga. Mm -hmm. But if there has to be an extension because, as she said, she yeah. said a dilation, a dilation, I would imagine is is, is a procedure for. It's a, is it's this a, considered a gynecological? Yeah, is it a gynecological? Yeah, condition? that's the first uh, is it? question. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, it is. Okay. Perhaps it, she curitage. had a miscarriage. There's also curatage. Yeah, they mentioned curatage. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So, so. It, for a miscarriage, uh, the procedure that follows it is it considered part of a maternity leave or gynecological condition? Mm. Maternity leave. Maternity uh, leave. You're entitled to. Uh, maternity oh, leave, including miscarriage. Okay, oh, so 60 right. days. 60 days yeah. And then if she gets an extension, okay. kailangan siguro i-prove niya na it's a part, it's like a, yeah, it falls under the gynecological mm -hmm. procedure mm -hmm. to entitle her to an additional mm -hmm. two months. Okay, mm -hmm. just a clarification though regarding that. Uh, when it comes to maternity leaves, the, the, does the law require uh, that the employer will pay her during is, is it a paid leave in other words is, mm -mm. is maternity leave a paid leave or does she claim against sss it's a claim against yeah. sss oh, okay. but yeah. the employer so, can uh pay in advance uh, the, yeah okay and reimburse when you say it can, the SSS. can or, or he must pay in advance i think must pay in must advance. pay in advance uh, mm -hmm. and then the, the employer then can claim against uh, yes. SSS. sss all right okay mm -hmm. We have another question from Tony. I had an abnormal uterine bleeding last January. My doctor's advice was to rest for 60 days. I filed for medical leave and it was approved, but while on leave, I was forced to resign by my superior. <laughs> this was the first time I was absent or filed for medical leave in my 11 months of being with a company. Can they do this to me since I haven't been with them for one year? I think you have to have at least work for 12 months. Mm -hmm. Six but months of the 12 months. Six months of the 12 months. Six months of the 12 months. Oh, 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 that, that, oh. Then she falls. She falls under that. Was yeah, she months? falls yeah. under that. I she think uh, if, if that is the consideration, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. she doesn't mention that she underwent any surgery. Yeah. Because no. the important thing is surgery. Yeah, she had to be absent mm -hmm. because of a type of uh, condition where she had uterine bleeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, there was no and then surgery. she. It seemed like there was no surgery. I didn't hear, yeah. parang wala sa question in surgery, uh, but yeah. uh, she had to be absent med mm -hmm. for medical conditions because of this. Yeah. And she was dismissed. But so, what's the remedy niya dito? Is it I, I, uh, illegal I don't dismissal? Understand that, ano, I don't understand that forced. Uh, she was forced to resign because there is no forced resignation. It cannot be done. A forced resignation be... amounts to illegal dismissal, yes, exactly. right? Yes, right. oh. exactly. So in this case, can she complain of illegal dismissal? I think she should uh, no, seek help sa dole. Yes. Kasi may because there are causes naman that's just or mm -mm. authorized. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So, maaring ito. Yeah, from, from, from what she says, it, 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 it looks like uh, that's illegal dismissal. Mm -hmm. From, from uh, the way uh, mm -hmm. she said things. Yeah. 
And in terms of absences, what would be uh, a just cause for dismissing a person, a worker who's been absent? How many days normally or what type of absences would justify an employer in, to dismiss an employee? It would really depend on their company, company policy. policies. Mm -hmm. But if there is gross negligence yeah. in the performance of uh -oh. her duty or his duty for that matter, kahit males din naman, mm -hmm. that constitutes one of the just cause. But just in this case, her leave was approved. Yeah. Uh -oh. yeah. That's, so, that's the, uh, that's the problem. Yeah. problem. Yeah. Possible, yeah. ano, possible case. Kailangan yeah. 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 yeah, so Tony should mm -hmm. go to one of the regional yeah. offices of the Department of Labor and seek help because yeah. it might have been illegal dismissal. Right. Now, from Twitter naman, we have this question from uh, Denise. And she asks, I am a lesbian and I applied for a job opening and passed the pre-interview. But upon learning of my sexual orientation, I never heard from them again. Can this be classified as discrimination? Again, prior to, ano, no? prior, yes, to prior, hiring. Hiring. prior to hiring. Prior to hiring. Very prior difficult to prove. Oh, oh, is uh, that, yeah. paano yun? Is, what case does she have? Ah, he's not yet an employee. Yeah, mm -mm. there's no employer prerogative. Yeah. prerogative yeah. Yeah. So basically, mm -hmm. if you have someone not hiring because mm -hmm. ayon nila ng homosexuals or lesbians, the exactly. applicant cannot do anything unless the uh, non-discrimination bill uh, for LGBTs is approved. Mm -hmm. It's approved. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. What if you're discriminated as an employee? Employado ka na, You're discriminated because you're lesbian. Hmm. Is that a form of discrimination under labor laws? Um, so far, there's no law that covers uh, discrimination on account of sexual orientation. Mm -mm. So that's also part of the Magna bill Magna. Uh, that they're Magna. fighting yeah. for, including mm -hmm. uh, okay. protection to the LGBT. But, but for lesbians, I think the Magna Carta of Women will work and mm -hmm. can work. Mm. Because uh, all all forms of discrimination and all forms of, of uh, abuse actually is covered. The current by the Magna, Magna Carta, Carta or the one for the, the Magna Carta of women of women now right? now so the it, one it that's can, in effect. So it can work. Yeah, it can work. Mm -hmm. I think it can work. She Possible, should look at the look at that. Ah. if there's an employer employee yeah. relationship. Yeah. If, there's an employer, if you're employer already relationship. employed. If you are already employed. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, uh, just a quick one um, because I, again, if we already covered the Kasambahe law. In, a, in another episode, no? but just for the sake of, uh, since they are women and they, uh, most of them are women and they mm -hmm. fall under, uh, I mean, the working women class, mm -hmm. can you just briefly, uh, ma'am, uh, mm -hmm. just summarize some of the, the new benefits of, of women under the Kasambahay law? Well, under the Kasambahay law, they will, the, more, the most important thing is membership in the social security mm -hmm. system, yeah. Pag Ibig and Phil yeah. Health. Mm -hmm. An employer is supposed to contribute. They're that. supposed to contribute mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Unless, the, Unless salary the salary is 5,000 and above. above. If you're in the There will NCR. be a sharing of mm -hmm. um, contributions. Mm -hmm. Also, they should be covered by a contract of employment. Mm -hmm. There will be a pay slip. There's, they have to be registered also in the barangay. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And that uh, the DSWD, in coordination with the local government, like the barangay, should be there to assist abused kasambahay. So they should be involved in the rescue and rehabilitation of the abused kasambahay and provide services and also dole to provide uh, possible employment yes. if they want to be employed again in another setting. Okay, that's good to clarify. Mm -hmm. And finally, we have another question from Laurel. My friend got sick and called her boss that she will be absent that day. The boss told her to get a medical certificate from the doctor. When she presented the certificate, the boss refused it, saying that since the doctor told her that she needed to be admitted for five days in the hospital. But when my friend filed for a sick leave, the boss did not approve it. We don't understand why. Can we file for a case with this? Mm. Uh, I'm not too... Oh, I, I, what, happened what happened was uh, uh, she the, filed the for leave and then the medical, who mean a medical certificate, and then yeah. the medical certificate, certificate said, said she had days. to be admitted for five days. Yeah. And she, now the boss did not want to approve uh, that leave because I guess, I see, okay. Tagal, I get, five days. I okay. yeah. So yeah. is there something that they can file to complain about this, that she's not being given medical leave? As per medical, the medical certificate. Yes. Yeah. So if, she's, if she's a regular employee, she's supposed to be entitled 
to leave, di ba? And, yeah. and uh, yung five days ngayon, kahit yung service incentive leave mm -hmm. lang, is already five days. Mm -hmm. And that can be used uh, for that. Uh, I, I, I don't understand why. Yeah. <laughs> but I, have, not, I think I, ki I kind of understand her just because in my experience working for other law firms, usually you have an internal company policy that says you cannot really go on vacation leave, lalo na pag vacation leave without the approval yes. of the managing management mm -hmm. either and you're usually the partner that you always work with so in mm -hmm. some companies they also have this internal process that yes you have for instance 15 days mm -hmm. but you have to ask for approval yes so in this true. case if um the our, our viewer here the one who's asking the question was saying that she filed for a leave and maybe because it's their internal policy, even if she has it among her credits now, mm -hmm. she has five days left, ten days, but the mm -hmm. boss does not want to approve this. What type of case can she file to complain about the boss withholding the approval to get her mm -hmm. leave entitlement? What they should be, we have these humane conditions of work yeah. that should be provided to the employee. Exactly. If she's sick, then I think they should, yeah. should um, be allowed. give consideration. Mm -hmm. exactly. And then can they approach the Department of Labor That's for this? Yeah. Request for assistance or including money claims can be addressed by the dollar. Yeah. Okay, but so I, regional office on a Monday. Yeah, know. but, but uh -huh. I think that the first thing that uh, she should do is to, you know, take care of her health first. Mm -mm. You yeah. know, uh, whether the boss, uh, if she really needs it, whether the boss approves it or not, you know, if she's sick, I, I don't think she's going to be productive then in, yeah. in, in, mm. in, in, in the world. So regardless yes. of the approval, go yeah. take a leave, have yourself yeah. checked, and of course... Protect yourself, I mean, yes. protect yourself first. First. Mm -hmm. Take care of yourself. First and first. foremost. All right, mm -hmm. that's very, very good, helpful. A very good advice, yeah. Yes. All right, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for tonight. We'd like to thank our guests, Ms. Evelyn uh, Lita Manangan of the Bureau of Workers with Special Concerns, and Ms. Beth Angsioko, National Chairperson of the Democratic Women's Society of the Philippines for being with us tonight. I'm Attorney Rod Mosero. And I'm Attorney Karen Jimeno. If you have any questions on our topic for tonight, you may share them on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Join us again next Monday as we discuss your legal rights here on Legal Help Desk. Good night.